What would you do today if you had to leave this world tomorrow? Would you take the life-affirming approach of Martin Luther King, who would plant a tree that very day? Do you celebrate the party of your life with all your loved ones? Or do you choose to retreat, to review your life one last time, and say goodbye to this world in peace? There are reasons why we don't know the day and hour of our passing. Most people would probably break out in panic and heedlessly try to tackle 100 things at the same time. Would we give some people a piece of our mind and reveal the whole truth? There are so many ways to leave this world. Living as though it's the end times is certainly not a successful lifestyle. Nevertheless, it doesn't hurt to remind ourselves of the finite nature of this one life every now and then. We waste far too much time worrying, fretting, and engaging in meaningless activities that we would most certainly regret if it were all over tomorrow. So let's take a realistic look at this what-if scenario. If you like our videos, feel free to support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Psychology in Mind, activate the little bell, and get excited about the videos we upload for you every day. Number one, please don't take it literally. The wise saying, live every day as if it were your last, should be taken to heart, but not literally. What would happen then? You would quit your unloved job, give the people around you a piece of your mind, and settle long overdue interpersonal scores. You might even quickly get involved in an amorous adventure that could catch up with you in an unpleasant way the very next day. All your money would be gone, because after all, one should celebrate appropriately. It would therefore be advisable to turn to Mark Twain's famous quote, Give every day the chance to be the best day of your life. Here rests the same potential as in the logic of the last day, but without the destructive lingering effects on a long-term level. Number 2. Mindfulness instead of panic None of us knows when he will die. Some people are granted a kind of timeline in front of their eyes, for example in the form of a serious, incurable disease. These people then have the choice of what they want to do with the knowledge that they only have a limited amount of time left to live. However, if you strive to simply make the most of each of your days, you can focus on the truly beautiful things. No one can tell you how to live. There will also be niches in your existence that you are not really comfortable with, and that you have long wanted to face. Is it the job that doesn't make you happy? Are there partners or associates who mean more stress than happiness for you? Are there unresolved conflicts or friendships that you carry around with you like a millstone? The purpose of carpe diem logic is not to question and overturn our entire lives. We modern humans are far too integrated into society, business, and social networks for that. But that doesn't mean you can't do better. If your life doesn't feel like it fills you every day, if not with unbridled joy, then at least with deep satisfaction, go on a search. Where are the leaks lurking that siphon energy from you every day without giving any of it back? Who or what is spoiling your good mood again and again? Who is just taking advantage of you? Number three, be grateful for what you have. The best and fastest way to figure out what we want is to look at what we already have. The hundreds of things we take for granted every day that we already don't even notice out of habit deserve thanks and appreciation. Become aware of how rich and blessed your life already is. Happiness attracts happiness. Good attracts good. Number four, where there's a will, there's a way. This old adage encourages us not to waste one more day of our lives languishing in the mediocrity of an uninspiring existence. If there is something you still want to do with your life, roll up your sleeves and get into position. If you really, really want something, you will succeed. Number five, your life is happening now. Let go of the past and stop putting all your wishes and desires on the future. There is only one day in your life that you can actively shape and control the course of, today. Don't let yourself miss the many small wonders that today has to offer you because yesterday is still on your mind, and tomorrow is already impatiently demanding your attention. Number 6. Guard your time like your most precious treasure While we are thinking about life and its end, there is one thing we should not forget. 
time is precious because it is limited. Every day of life, even every hour, is priceless in view of the fact that they could be the last for this life. How do you want to use this resource? Do you want to spend it with senseless surfing on the internet? Hours of your life stuck in front of the TV, watching the creative output of others? Or isn't it time to leave your own mark on this world? Are you always there for others, but never have time for yourself? Terminate the friendship with these time robbers. Next to our health, time is by far the most valuable thing that we humans may freely dispose of. We should take this freedom. Number seven, you are what you think. On the way to a better quality of life, there is one thing we must never underestimate, the power of our thoughts. Everything we can imagine can become reality. Those who think only of great events such as winning the lottery or the dream wedding underestimate themselves. We think every second of the day, even at night, our brain does not really come to rest. What we think has a direct impact on how we are perceived by others. Each of our words starts in our head, each of our actions as well. If you think badly about yourself or others, sooner or later you will become a bad person. Take yourself by the scruff of the neck every time derogatory opinions and ill-tempered views try to manifest in your mind. It is best to counteract this immediately. Then this negative association can no longer harm you. It is similar to your thought patterns with your words. Listen to yourself for one day. How do you talk about others and your world? The phrase, talking things up, is not a coincidence. Most of the time, however, we rehearse the exact opposite. Today's conclusion, live every day as if it belongs to you, because it does. It is your life, not that of other people who want to put their stamp on you. Who are you as a person? What makes you happy? What do you absolutely need to live and what can go? The goal of a happy life would be to spend each day in such a way that you can enter eternity the next with no regrets and no feeling of having missed anything. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Did you find this information helpful? Do you have experience with it? We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. For more resources about mental health, self-improvement, and psychology, visit our website. You'll find the link in the video description where you can also connect with us on social media and sign up for our email list. Take care of yourself and have a beautiful day.